This lesson is on quadratic functions and transformations and vertex form of a quadratic. Okay, so we're going to start off with uh, parent functions. And we're going to talk now about a parent function of f of x equals x squared or y equals x squared. Uh, before, we have talked about absolute value parent functions. And all parent functions and their transformations work the same way. So this should be a little familiar to you. Okay, so let's start off with um, a graph uh, in x and y. And let's start off with our parent graph, y equals x squared. Our vertex is going to be at 0, 0. And we're going to put the vertex in the middle of the chart and put a little box around it so that we don't lose sight of it. So that's our vertex. And then we're going to do what we call a five-point graph. With um, absolute value, you only needed the vertex and two other points, one to the left of the vertex and one to the right, because you were graphing straight lines. With a parabola, you're graphing a curve. So you need a five-point graph. The vertex, two points to the left of the vertex, two points to the right of the vertex. So to the left of the vertex, we could do negative 1, negative 2, and to the right, 1 and 2. That's the simplest way. And when we find, we plug in x to find y, we have uh, negative 1 squared is 1, negative 2 squared is 4, 1 squared is 1, and 2 squared is 4. So if we plot those points, we get our parabola, like this, and then um, we can see that the vertex is a minimum. If the parabola opens upward, the vertex is going to be the lowest point, so that would be the minimum. Also, the axis of symmetry runs straight down the middle of the graph, cuts it in half, just like a mirror, because that's a line, line of reflection. And the way we find that is x equals 0, and we get that just by saying, what's the x value of the vertex? Well, x equals 0. So it's a vertical line. The graph of it is x equals 0. All right, let's say we describe what is done to the parent graph y equals x squared to get y equals 2 times the quantity x minus 3 squared plus 1. Well, if we examine this, we know the vertex shifts right 3 and up 1. Remember, the x always seems to go backwards to what you think it would be, and the y always goes direct. The vertical It's going to be a vertical stretch by a factor of 2, because we have a 2 out in front. And so if we want to graph this, we make our little xy chart. We know that our vertex is at 3, 1. So we're going to plug that in there. We're going to go ahead and plot 3, 1. And now we want to choose two points below, two points to the left of the vertex, and two points to the right. So if we put... Um, go two, 3, 2, 1, and 3, 4, 5, because we're, they're evenly spaced. And the reason we want to evenly space them is so that we can use the symmetry of the um, axis of symmetry to plot another point without having to actually uh, calculate it. So we will have, if we plug in um, 1 for x, we get y equals 9. And if we plug in 2 for x, we get y equals 3. So we'll have 9, 3 here, and as long as we've done our arithmetic right, then we'll have 3, 9, because we have that symmetry. So we're going to now graph the, um, the axis of symmetry, which is going to be x equals 3, and then we're going to plot our other points and draw our graph. Now notice that the vertex went 3 to the right and up 1 and that the parabola stretched upwards. Okay, so let's look at this one. y equals negative 1 half times the quantity x plus 1 squared. How would we graph that? Well, let's describe it first. There's a plus 0 out there. There's nothing out there so to move the graph up or down, so we can just imagine there's a plus 0 there. It's going to go to the left one. It's going to flip over the x-axis because it has a negative sign and it's going to compress by a factor of one-half. All right, so how would we um, graph this? Well, first of all, the vertex is going to be at negative one, zero. So we're going to put our negative one, zero in the middle of our chart. And this time we need to 
kind of th rethink what numbers we're going to choose to the left of the x-axis or to the left of the vertex and to the right of the vertex. And this is this way of doing it is only if you don't want to have to graph fractions. We're going to try to keep from graphing fractions. And so what numbers would we have to choose? Well, first of all, we're, we are multiplying by one half, which is the same thing as dividing by two or negative two. And so what's inside this parenthesis is going to have to be an even number. And in order for it to be an even number, x is going to have to be an odd number. Do you get that? Take a look at this. If I choose negative 3 and negative 5, and then 1 and 3, basically what I'm doing is I'm, I'm going by, uh, I'm skipping by 2. So negative 1, negative 3, negative 5, and negative 1, 1, 3. They all have the same space in between them. So if I plug in here, I'll have negative 5 plus 1 is negative 4. Negative 4 squared is 16, and 16 times negative 1 half is negative 8. So I can, you can do it with fractions if you want, but I know sometimes you don't like to have to graph fractions. So here's the way you would do it. So here's the other numbers that we would have when you plug in. I'm going to leave that part up to you. So here's our graph, and we have our vertex at negative 1, 0. We have our axis of symmetry at x equals negative 1. And we're going to plot the rest of our points. And notice, once again, those are five points. And notice that the space or the distance between the point and the uh, axis of symmetry is the same as the axis of symmetry and the point on the other side. Okay? And also notice that the graph is wider because we have compressed it. All right, let's try another one. The, this is called the vertex form of, of a parabola, and it's in the form y equals a times the quantity x minus h, the quantity squared, plus k. Okay, now you need to memorize this. I know you don't like to do that, but you're going to need to. The vertex is h, k, and you can see that because, once again, the h kind of goes opposite of what you would think, and the k is the same. Um, the number out in front, if it is greater than 1, if the absolute value of it is greater than 1, it will be a vertical stretch. If it is a fraction between 0 and 1, it's going to be a vertical compress. And if x, if a is negative, it's going to flip over the x-axis. Okay? Memorize that also. Get that into your brain. And basically, this is the same as any parent function the functions that come from that are going to all react the same way. So let's graph f of x equals negative 2 times the quantity x minus 1 squared plus 3. Okay, the value of a is negative 2. The uh, vertex is 1, 3. And first thing we want to do is plot the vertex. So the vertex is 1, 3. There it is. The next thing is the axis of symmetry is because 1 is the x-coordinate, it's going to be x equals 1, and that's a vertical line that goes through 1 on the x-axis. And we're going to put our 1, 3 in the middle of our chart, and we're going to fill in uh, 2 to the left of the vertex and 2 to the right of the vertex. And when we work out our, our um, formulas here, we have negative 5, 1, and so on the other, the other side, it's going to be 1, negative 5, provided that you didn't make any arithmetic mistakes. So when we plot these, there they are. There's our graph. Now let's describe this graph. Well, first of all, from the parent graph, we know that it's going to turn upside down because we have a negative 2. And it's going to be a stretch because we have a 2. We also know that it's going to shift 1 to the right and up 3, which it did. Okay, so now the last thing we want to do is write a function based on um, y equals x squared. Okay, whose hor the horizontal shift is 3 to the right, the vertical shift is down 2, and the vertical compression is by a factor of 1 half. So we're going to start with our parent function y equals uh, y equals x squared. We know that 
we're going to do a compression factor of one half, so that's going to go out in front of the parentheses. We know that we have shifted right three, so that will make it negative three. We have shifted down two, so that will make it negative two. And we have to make sure in there that we haven't forgotten, haven't forgotten to square this, or it wouldn't be right, it would be a linear function. So there is our equation. Let's graph it. Okay, we're going to have 3, negative 2. Um, we want to make this, in the parentheses, odd, once again, just simply to make our, our graphing easier. So we're going to go to, from 3 to 1 to negative 1, and from 3 to 5 to 7. And once again, you don't have to do this as long as you are willing to graph fractions on your, on your graph. And when we fill in here, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave the arithmetic up to you, we get 6, 0 to the left and 0, 6 to the right. So there is our um, vertex, our axis of symmetry, and our points. So once again, we have our five-point graph. There is our graph. And that's the end. Thanks, folks. I'll see you in class. Bye.